Hi everyone, welcome back. My name is Sarah and tonight we are going to review the COVID-19 data from CDC week three. Week three began on Sunday, January 17th and ended on Saturday, January 23rd. Keep in mind that this review does not include updates from the past couple days. So for the most recent up-to-date data, please check out the COVID-19 dashboard on our website. We had an overall weekly case count of 801 confirmed and probable cases during week three, and our cumulative total dating all the way back to March of last year, when we first started reporting COVID cases has now reached 20,034 cases. We reported 164 COVID-19 associated deaths, as well as 26 outbreaks in our long-term care facilities. Beginning with figure one, you'll see the number of confirmed and probable cases by week. This is a great visual to show us how our total cases are trending from week to week. The past two weeks, we've had a decrease in weekly cases. During week two, we had 848 cases. And last week during week three, we had 801 cases. We use this weekly case number to calculate our new cases per 100,000 per week, which is one of the main White House indicators on our color chart. During week three, our new cases per 100,000 per week was around 356, which is categorized as red on the color chart. It still indicates we are experiencing uncontrolled spread in the community, but we're certainly moving in the right direction as we're no longer in that most severe dark red category. Next, let's look at the breakdown of the daily case numbers and that seven day rolling average of cases. We are trending back down after that small spike from the holidays. At the end of last week, our seven day rolling average was around 115 cases per day. We use this number to calculate the seven day rolling average of cases per day per 100,000 residents. This is one of our main indicators on the color chart. We are still in the red status for this category. Our rolling average of cases per day needs to be somewhere around 55 to 56 cases in order to get us back down into that orange category. In figure four, our cases are divided up by age group. Most age groups only experienced around a three to 4% total increase in cases. And the 50 to 59 year age group has the highest number of cumulative cases with 3,261. As I stated earlier, we are reporting 164 deaths in the community. Our cumulative fatality rate in Jefferson County is now 0.82%. We are seeing the majority of deaths occur in the 60 and higher age groups. There are currently 10 deaths in the community ages 59 and younger. Table three shows our number of positive tests, negative tests, and that weekly percent positive rate. During week three, we had 591 confirmed PCR positive tests, making that percent positive rate 19.3%. For the past two weeks, we've had a positivity rate lower than 20%, which is definitely encouraging because we have not seen that positivity rate lower than 20% since late October. This percent positive rate only includes positive results from PCR tests. Any positive result from an antigen test would be classified as a probable and included on that main weekly confirmed and probable case count. Be sure to refer back to our website and the COVID-19 dashboard for more statistics. We also have information about this year's flu cases for those who are interested to give a Quick overall summary, we are seeing very low levels of flu so far this year. Usually the flu cases tend to pick up right around now, but we're not necessarily seeing them pick up quite yet. Remember that flu is a respiratory virus also. So all of the mitigation strategies that we are, that we are practicing to prevent transmission of COVID also work to prevent transmission of the flu. Thanks everybody for listening in and watching our stats report this evening. Stay safe, stay healthy and warm on this snowy day. Have a great evening, everyone.